Hello and welcome back to Bartos Gate 3. Oh, they have lots of HP. Uh, I need to kill three of them. Only three of them, yeah. Okay, he needs to come a little bit closer. He should be fine. Still disadvantage. That doesn't bode well. Four. Wait. Okay, I have an idea. Okay, they are all stunned. Where's the stone? There he is. It has to be bonus action. Okay, never mind. I wanted to push her. Step up here. Actually, oh no. I hope it will work, but not. Orpheus. Do we not have anything that works? Okay. 
No. Oh, actually. You should be hypnotized, what are you doing? She still gets to act? Hmm. Interesting. Come on, do something. Or don't do anything at all. your bear. He's still alive. Not anymore. just unbelievable how often she can do that.
Wait, 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 you can bite her. And so Gale is dead. Not the one I wish to speak with. Bring me your leader. Stand. Now is not your time. We have much to discuss. Don't look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. To owe one's life to a mind flayer. It seems to make a mockery of this entire struggle. I ask again, who are you? And this, and I'm going to need a name this time. You may call me the Emperor. Oh, but I have a name. I prefer the name. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them, rarely missed. And they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stelmane. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself. Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call me Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. So, are you going to tell me what this battle was about? We fought to tame Prince Orpheus, the son of Gith herself. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlacheth declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlacheth wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prism. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my home prince and if they had succeeded we would be lost i am relieved you have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them alone orpheus will be much easier to control
was it too or Orpheus that the Black Cave wanted us to kill when she ordered us inside the prison? Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blackith will be finished. Were you imprisoned here? Too? Were you imprisoned here too? No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the astral prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. What happens with a free Orpheus? That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. The more I talk to you, the less you seem like a mind flayer. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel, but the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. No, 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 I don't like what you're implying. Like it or not, our chances of defeating the Elder Brain are substantially improved if you embrace your latent illithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength. The same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. No, no way. Even as you say the words, you feel a lurch of disappointment. Your mind bristles with a lithid potential. How could you be so cruel as to deny yourself what you want most in the world? I felt that. It's your nature. You cannot fight it. So embrace it. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. What is it? A tadpole. Nurtured by the psionic energy of the astral plane, cocooned here for millennia, it has become extraordinary. No, I won't. A wave of 
disappointment stronger than any you've ever felt. And then, stillness. You've resisted your lithid instincts. For now. You are not ready yet. Keep hold of it then. Until you are. It has enough vitality to further your evolution. And your allies. Perhaps you will be more inclined to try it when you see more of what our enemy can do. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. Mm, could you by any chance? Okay, there is a Do I have one of the scrolls? Thank you. Plane, thank you very much. I want to sleep. What's inside? Private word would be nice. So your confidant was a mind flayer all along. Disquieting to say the least. Hmm. Oh well, not like I knew that. I suspected that I wasn't sure. Oh, quite the rug pull, eh? A mind flayer manipulating us this whole time. Such creatures are not to be trusted as a general rule, though this one does appear to have had a significant hand in our survival up to this point. Mm. At best, an ally whose motivations remain shrouded in deceit. We should be wary of what such an alliance may cost us. Yeah. We've been given our gift an astral touched path pool. With the part around your new partial if it form. I can only imagine what I could do were I to adopt the biology of a mind flayer. You've not taken this power for yourself. So I can only wonder why offer it to me. I really there should be third option. I was just curious if you would want that. You will wield this power well, and with wisdom. There aren't many I'll trust with, with, with this. If this is what the fates have offered to aid our cause, then who am I to refuse? I'll take your tadpole. Let's see what it has to offer. He took it. Oh. Life pulses from within. The parasite's thoughts whisper at the edge of your mind. It wants to share itself with you. It wants to be let in. Go on. Don't be afraid. It only wants to help you evolve. Okay, I can give you D12. Oh. 
The tadpole screams for growth with painful intensity. It has been starved of life, of purpose. It welcomes your probing like a void waiting to be filled. If you let it, it will evolve you. Just as the Emperor said. Your thoughts swirl with possibility. Your body strengthened, your mind bolstered, your very self expanded. All within your reach, if you open your mind to the parasite. Open your mind. A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens. It's yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. Perhaps, once the others see what you can do, they will consider trying it for themselves. After that, did, you have embraced a Sarmophotis and became half elephant. You can now look at more powerful psionics. Ah, excellent choice. Hmm. You have discovered a marvelous ability within yourself. Special strategies and similar results equals for your next action or spell arm move. And these things have stayed interesting. Yes. What is it? Okay, I guess no, no asking how he feels after the change. I need a moment for the two of us. So, we owe our lack of tentacles to one of the very creatures that kidnapped us. And now it's offering us power if we're willing to evolve. Yeah. We both know what it is capable of, but I'm not touching it. Hmm. Unlike you, to be so unwilling to receive a new power. That was before I knew the cost. Before I knew it meant transforming into some grotesque beast. I remember how it hurt when I turned into a vampire. My body writhed and warped while I was utterly helpless. The grip of death owned my heart as it beat its last. I don't want to turn into anything else. I can't do that again. I can't watch my body be taken over. Alright, I'll speak no more of the matter. I had nothing for so long. Nothing. Not even my own body. I will not give it up. Now it's mine again. Understandable. Seems simple enough. Can I go to sleep, please? Move the bodies next to my bedroom. with Lysel's. Her heart races as she learns of the events inside the astral prison. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. It is not the Gaith visitor that Vlakith would destroy and Vos would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. The blood of the mother? So who is he exactly? Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truths. 
For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Lacketh. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. 157? That's a lot of Vlakis. Yes. Our current queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is, Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlakith One. It was Kithrak Vos himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshas teach us. Yet the prince of the comet's been with us. Subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlakith's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. What happens now? We meet Voss in the city, and we obtain the key to freeing Orpheus from his prison. Every word Voss spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies, and the living weapon that conquered our Geich slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyanki are to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. The Emperor's Astral Touch, that will promise exceptional power. It also promises to break us beyond repair. This ossified parasite does not make us more, but less. There will be ice where once there was fire. There will be a void where our souls once resided. It's fine, we don't need to use it. I know, and I won't. So, there's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the special that bull the Emperor offered will increase our chances of success. I haven't even dared to use the more benign forms of illicit powers. Do you really think I'm eager to jump to the next step? You know what that offer truly entails, don't you? Become half a mind flayer, lose half of yourself. I don't want that. Very well. Whoa. Okay. Don't do that. Wait, 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 scratch. dog is unable to speak through the small bag he holds in his mouth. What you've got there? I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. Oh, All you. I know is I thought of you when I saw it. Flay has been getting their tentacles all over our dreams this whole time. I'm really not sure about putting any trust at all in this thing. 
It's already shown itself a liar. I've got my eyes on the Emperor, and Karlak doesn't blink. Okay, I think that's all you. We can finally depart for the Baldur's Gate. After so long time, I think it's been like 70 hours? We must find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves and take their nether stones. Okay. Baldur's Gate is right over the hills. And so is Cazador. Cazador and his right of profane ascension. An imperious soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. We need to stop him yesterday. We will kill him, but there's more to it. Think about it. It sounds like Casador, for all his evils, has gotten further than any of my kind ever have. He's on the verge of a miracle. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. So you would like to take the power from him? The others bound to the ritual. <laughs> What's a handful of the wretch's servants? If they're anything like me when I was enslaved, they're all but begging for death anyway. After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. Hmm. Damn right. We'll be glorious both, you and I. You'll have your day too. Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Casador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. Well, information will be useful. We'll find the other spawn. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Cazador's change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. So right now I'm starting to feel more and more like Kid and the big bully that tells him what to do. The absolute should be a thing of the past, and I with it. Yet, at the risk of angering Mr. Fervor, I'm glad it didn't come to that, given what has come to light. You don't miss the Shadow Crest Lands, then? Hardly. I'm more than glad to leave that place behind. The Elder Brain. But, more importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but... No matter. It exists. I must learn more of it. Wait, we've been through that already. Okay, why is this crown so important? All of a sudden? That crown sits on a gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. 
Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep. Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. Okay, we definitely went through that. Ha! Sorcerer's Sundries is no mere trading post. Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. Okay, so slow down. can we now finally go to Baldur's Gate? Why are you saving? Okay, problems ahead. I can't find my mum. Where did you last see her? She was... Um... She was sick. She had spots on her face and hands. She went to go get some herbs, and she was supposed to come back the same day. That was last ten day, though. Ooh. You must be hungry. Take some food. My mum would like this. She's the best cook in the world. And she taught me too. I'll um I'll look for her. I think she'll probably come soon. Thanks a lot. There is so much wrong with that name. Oh yes. Raving Tom. Okay, what do we start with? Should it take your fancy? Such sweetness should be shared. Thank you. I'm not paid to talk. If you want something, speak to Zenovia. There's so many people here. Oh. Apparently we have some time off. We told our son that this is a holiday to spare him the truth. We don't have homes to go back to. What? Back. You're in my house. Really there now. You can see the city. Up on the hill. I see it. There's up there. Turn back, citizen. No passage in this direction. Why not? It's bloodier than a butcher's backyard out there. Piles of dead absolutists, and a few of our own as well. The cultists assaulted the gate, armed to the teeth trying to break in. They nearly had it too, before the Steel Watch intervened. Steel Watch? Is that some sort of fancy new rank of City Watchman? <laughs> a little more than that. You'll see for yourself soon enough if you head to the city. Hmm. Would you mind if I went up here? You know. I'll give it a shot. You'll be in a big cozy No passage this way, I'm afraid. Turn back. It's for your own good. Okay. It's coming from there. Please just go home. 
You're ruining a perfectly uneventful posting with this nonsense. The flaming fists are supposed to protect this good city, but they allow trash and vermin to take our homes and goods. Oh, another visitor, I see. Listen, we keep letting the likes of you in. Soon, there'll be no room left for any of us true Baldarians. I thought cities were supposed to welcome folk of all walks of life. Clearly, I was mistaken. I'll have you know I was born and bred in Baldur's Gate. Oh, my apologies. Now I hear you speak, I, of course, realize you're a local. Bardurian, your accent's Rivingtonian, that hardly counts. Excuse me? I was <laughs> born inside the city walls, a Baldarian through and through. Wherever you're from, clearly they don't teach manners. I'm not paid to debate with civilians. No, we pay taxes for you to protect us, not these intruders. You did me a real favor clearing all those ghouls out of Moonrise. That old bonebag Ketherick had some fancy junk stashed behind all the cobwebs and piles of gore. Good to see you here. You looted Moonrise Towers. Didn't you? Figured we only got the scraps you didn't have the strength to carry. What do you think of Baldur's Gate? Wish I could tell you. We're stuck out here, but most of the action is beyond Worms Crossing. Show me these fancy items you have on offer. Anything magical? Would I try to fool a sharpie like you? Have a look. <laughs> Let's see. Corvid token. Mmm, that sounds good. Elixir of Psychic Resistance. That could be useful. I will take those from you, that's for sure. Thanks. Stay away from trap chests. Thank you. Oh hi! Oh, if you're here to save me again, I don't really need to be saved right now. Good thing, huh? Bye. Good thing in it. I thought I saw a bunny. I'm paid to take down troublemakers, so don't make trouble. You turn around and toddle your way right back out of here. Everything in this barn has been donated for the refugees, not you. Now piss off. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. You sure? This lot have been through enough without your ignorance. Now, are you going to clear off or not? Yeesh. Is there... Hmm. I would like to make a donation to the refugees, actually. Guess you're not all bad. Give it here and I'll make sure it's kept safely with the other donations. I just need some gold supplies. Hmm. Let's see what you've got. Oh, really? Might as well. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I'm sure your contribution will be greatly appreciated. Oh, I just wanted to speak to the Spiggy. I say, terribly decent of you to come over and exchange pleasantries. Hmm. You're one of the most impressive pigs I've ever seen. Oh, how kind of you to say. I have been growing my bristles out. It's something of an art, you see. Hmm. Good to know. 
Okay, maybe that's the talk around they spawn too much then. Christine is pretty swan. Oh, I think she held out a bit more. Then I guess you better get wet. At all. And soon. Now, now, mind your tongues. So rude. Only to be corralled like cattle. Hey. So, you survived. That's more than many of my kin can say. At least you made it. How are you holding up? It's mainly anger that keeps me going. Zevlor was supposed to lead us, but he froze when we needed him most. I, I haven't seen him since the massacre on the road, which is lucky for him. You're all right. My gods, you're all right. Come here, darling. I forgot about him. What? I was so scared I'd lost you. Me too. But we're here now. Safe. It's wonderful to see you two back together. <laughs> Credit where it's due. Bex. This is the one who helped me and the others escape. This isn't the first time you've helped us. Saved our lives, really. Why? You keep getting into my way. <laughs> you were in trouble. I wanted to help. Simple as that. You make it sound so easy. But I know the lengths you've gone to on our behalf. We'll never forget it. Never ever. Here. Take these for the road. It's the least I can do. Okay, and I'm gonna this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.